All right, guys, I hope by this time you watch this video, we all understand what's going on here in America. Last episode, we had a, a unfortunate event happen, and I discussed it on the Black Air Force News segment. And I want to recircle that, but I also want to open the floor for conversation. So right. I'm going to ask my guest here, Marcus, how do you feel about mass shootings in America? I feel like, well, we already know who's doing most of the mass shootings. So, I mean, it's no, it's no hidden agenda there. Um, I feel like it's really kind of, this is my, what is it? Um, mm -hmm. Break it down. Bro. It's, it's really crazy. I forgot the word for it, but um, I feel like it's a ploy that America is trying to get rid of black people. And so it's like mostly led by Todd, KKK. It's Todd coming <laughs> with the bullshit. It's America coming I'm with the you. bullshit. Okay. I'm you. Okay. I'm birth so on birthday say they really trying to knock this black people off the map. Take us off the map for real. I'm telling you. Okay. So I had somebody, you know, you don't have haters. You really not popping. I had a hater in my comment section wanting to clap back a clap back queen. They want to clap back and say, where's your jokes about Chicago and Chirac? Every weekend, it's a shootout. Here's the reality of the situation. You mm -hmm. can avoid going to Chicago. You can avoid going to Chirac if you feel it is, though, it's so dangerous there. What you can't avoid is schools, movie theaters, grocery stores, yeah. summer camps, churches, <laughs> fast food restaurants. Then a camp just got shot I, up. I, a summer camp just got shot up, really. That's crazy. You know, a lot of people would say that would never happen. But unfortunately, I guess those people are from Missouri because they had to so be shot. So do you feel like the problem is the guns or, like, it's more so the, the people? The people, yeah. I feel like it's a combination of both. One, there's no reason as, like, a American adults that we should be owning an AR-15 yeah. or an AK-47. There's nothing you hunt in the woods under no circumstances that requires that kind of weaponry. Two, I can understand people who just want to have them for their own, like, whatever mm -hmm. they fucking do, you know? Yeah. Or whatever they do. But at the same time, you have people who will have, like, an arsenal of, like, 30 or 40 guns yeah. with no ways to touch all yeah. of them all at once. So then it makes you wonder the mental health behind it. Like, something is mentally not, like, there to make you realize that's not important. And, you know, people have suggested you know, adding guns, mm -hmm. giving guns to teachers. Once you put a gun yeah. into a situation, that increases the amount of a gun being used in a bad situation, you know? Yeah, I understand that. Uh, like, uh, like people if in an argument, like, say you just get into it, somebody to a job, ooh, and y'all all have an emergency gun on the desk, that argument's really not going to go too great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so, and now you take that yeah, element uh, and you yeah. put that element into a school yeah. where you have adults who are very emotional, you yeah. see how a lot of these teachers have been acting since this pandemic has started yeah. quitting, walking out, rioting, um, storming the buildings. We're gonna get on. We're gonna get on that storming the buildings. <laughs> yeah, storming the buildings. Hashtag January six. Y'all is going to jail. Y'all not. No, 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 no. Under the jail. Under the under the jail. Y'all going to Berlin hell. Ooh. Well, I know. I, well, I, 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 don't I, I don't got a hell to put you in. But I don't got a hell to put you in. But like, y'all was wrong for that. Y'all going to jail. Y'all going to jail. But um, I feel like there is no reason why certain some elementary schools and middle schools only have one child psychologist, one child therapist, two or three social workers for like 400 and 500 kids. There's children that get lost mm -hmm. in that. And then those children get lost who don't know how to process anger, disappointment, and grief. That's how you get these children that lash out and do all kind of crazy stuff like just shoot up a school or shoot up a movie theater or go and shoot up a church. Nobody's paying attention. Nobody's trying to help. Nobody's putting energy into that. But instead we feed in our pockets. Oh, let's make a new school. Let's put this there. Let's put this there. Y'all also yeah. worry about the dog on school band program. Oh, my God. Nobody's going to be hitting any drums as everybody's dead. You're, you're right. So that that's just. It's definitely like people in power just not putting like the stuff in right order. We're worried about the wrong stuff. Yeah. The decoration of things instead of like the real fucking issues. Yep. Yep. That so. that that is a valid point. Um and it brings me to my other point. Um 
at what point do you think what do you think the difference is between black people getting mad about getting shot by the police or black people getting shot in the hood what is the difference I mean there's a in your opinion key, there's a major key difference what's the difference this white police officers using their position of power of the little power they have and abusing it um point blank period now the killing amongst each other can be kind of fixed if we just all kind of get on the same page now how are we going to get on that same page i don't, I don't know. know i'm not you know, like they love to say, i don't know what that looks i'm like. not dark Martin i don't know how it sounds so. so. it looks like bird <laughs> people like they, they be like when they be explaining like when, people, they, they, when they explain things they mm-hmm. be like, i don't know what it looks like i don't know how it's gonna sound i don't know what it's gonna be yeah that means yeah. you don't fucking know either but what you said martin luther king oh yeah i'm not martin luther king so martin i can't get luther us king i can't get us a whole you can't get us on the park we, <laughs> we all just need to we all just need to figure out what you know what i think is. it is what i think um black people and i can only speak for my situation well my understanding because of how where i live the people the lifestyle that i live mm-hmm. amongst other black people i think we have a lack of compassion towards each other and we kind of take yeah. other black people for granted that's why we are so much readier to argue get violent get loud it's, disrespect each other versus a white person or a yeah. latino person or an asian person or his or hispanic person because that it just seems like black people are so much easier to get pissed off at each other or get upset and angry at each other like niggas will just fight outside a gas station and literally without too many details literally can be the same person they the same height it needs to be black history month for real we need it, another it all, history well it's month. always black history month for me okay because um, that's another month that i'm alive and i'm a black person so you know what? history i'm gonna start thinking like that you should always I always think like that's that mamba mentality there you go and that's not mob of mentality but something like that but i feel like we have a lack of um compassion towards mm-hmm. each other we we lack being able to see outside of situations like i go like here's a prime example of a situation um those traffic road rage incidents imagine you just driving down fucking Tryon street i think that's time yeah okay and like a car just swerves in front of you they blasting some money bag, yo, they swear in front of you and get over. You can do one of two things. You can continue your drive, or you can guess what? Now I'm gonna let this nigga know. What is you doing, bro? <clears throat> On the horn at you. It, it guess, ain't even like that no more, no. It's, and guess what happens? You got people who will lay on that horn, and then you got somebody who is gonna react violently. Oh, I'm gonna pull a gun out, scare mm-hmm. him. Now, and my thing is, where is the thinking? Hey, maybe he's having a bad day maybe he ain't see my car this nigga's an asshole let it go but we cannot seem to think that far when it comes to situations concerning us like yeah. i have not seen a lot of stories of black people just shooting a white person in the store or something or yeah. you know beating it's the fuck out of white person a lot of us we will take it to the next level when it comes to us don't argue with that white man he on me but it's a nigga on the street yeah they try to beat them down i mean and I feel like that's like overwhelmingly sad, and it's not something that a lot of black people are consciously able to accept because right. it's hard to give you know any kind of criticism to black people. Yeah, it is. It really they, is. yeah. So I feel like one, a lack of compassion. Mm-hmm. Two, it's the way we're viewed in the world. Like Be- black women are literally at the root of everything when it comes to pop culture. <laughs> to healthcare, skincare, clothing, sounds. I mean, but that's black people in general. General, yeah, black people in general. Like black we, people in general. But when it comes to other cultures taking and pulling, yeah. like when it comes to like if you just look at the newest um fashion styles and fashion trends, mm-hmm. literally um the 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 girls they got like a baby hair style now. It's like crazy what is it? Crazy crazy baby hairs? These these fucking pelicans walk around. <laughs> these damn seagulls are walking around. I'm gonna find a picture. I'm gonna insert that shit right here so y'all can see that these bitches are like seagulls. They walking around with they ed- with their edges like laid down really hard with like fucking co- wall cocking or whatever they got. I don't know, but it looks crazy and and it's because they're trying to imitate what they see black women just 
just do on the fly. Like a black girl can wake up, oh, I ain't got time to do my hair, push her hair back, slick down her edges, do a little puff, put it on something. And I'm like, ooh, she's eating that up. Yeah, Slay Queen, yeah. Whole time, she just trying to get through. But that 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 trickles down into how society views us. Like it's okay for them to look at how we dress, look at how we talk, look at how we had that snap. That that li- the personality of Lizzo is in so many fucking big bitches named Kathy. It's so many big bitches named Kathy that think they Lizzo on the inside. They go to sleep and they think, "What did Lizzo say? <laughs> I t- I just had a what she say? What, what what's the song? I'm gonna hit you know, back in a minute." Kathy though. <laughs> um, Kathy. So, if, when I hear the name Kathy, I just and, sh- and I promise you, I'm not bashing nobody named Kathy. No, like, like if it's a, if it's Kathy, a lady named I hear, yeah, we really do because if it's a lady I hear named Kathy, you really a decent person. I promise you, it's not even about you. I just may have had one or two bad experiences. What's up, Kathy? With, right. <laughs> What's up? With some big, big bone women named Kathy who happen to be Caucasian. That's it. It has nothing personal. Um, <laughs> I just feel like. That personality, like Lizzo's over the top, loud, vivacious personality, is always seeming to end up in situations uh, or end up in white spaces, and there's no representation of a black person. You have a whole office of women, of white women, who think they're Lizzo with no black women employed there. Just think about that. You walk in an office with all white women, and they all go around and use black slangs and black. Obvies and and pander and they don't hire them. They won't hire one. Oh, I love Lizzo and Megan, the St- but you won't hire a bitch to look like her. You won't hire the bitch in the office. Here's you won't have her on your team. You won't. So right. I just want you guys to sit and think about that. Um, also, when I drop this episode, I want you guys to send me y'all experiences. Have y'all ever experienced that? Like seeing. Other people, I will say creamy looking people, have the quote unquote black sound and this, that, and third. But black sound. There's no black people there. There's no reason why I should watch a video of like five or six white dudes fighting. Beat that nigga's ass. Beat that nigga's ass. Yeah, nigga. Beat that nigga up. Where's the nigga at? No nigga. Where's the nigga? I don't see him. I don't see him at all. So, um, yeah. You guys let me know about that. And that. Black Air Force News. So, sit back, grab your drink, get a blanket, wrap up, and listen, because I'm about to take y'all on a crazy ass story time about the first time I ever seen Beyonce live in person and it was the craziest thing ever but it just how it happened so all right have you ever seen beyonce live i never seen beyonce live i never got i'd be watching on youtube though and so, you're you know, okay be spirit. so from looking on videos in your opinion who do you think is the better performer beyonce michael jackson or chris brown Okay, well, we can go ahead and knock Chris Brown out that one real quick. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But. A lot of people say that he's a little bit better than I mean, um, Michael Jackson. I think that's just because he can dance and sing and do all that. You know, that's As just where that's Michael coming from. I mean, no, no, no. I'm not taking that away from Michael, but oh. but Michael Jackson. I'm not def- a Michael Jackson fan myself, so that's why I asked. Definitely the better performer, though, to answer your question. Yeah. Beyonce's good in there. She's good. I mean, she's like, she's good, but let's not, let's. She can go ahead and take the steps into legend status like they did too. Mm, that's true. That's true. You can't just be quick to hand that off here, you know? I mean, but she's good. I'm not taking up. You You're know. not knocking. Yeah, I'm not knocking. You're not knocking. You're not knocking. Um, okay, so I Hold on real quick. Same question to you though. Are you gonna say Beyonce? Me? After seeing that after going to that, mm-hmm. yeah, hands down out the water, Michael Jackson would have to come on stage and do a backflip with a dolphin shooting. Pixie dust out his ass. Okay. To Before top, you get Beyonce. Into story time. Yes. Do you feel like if Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston was still alive, do you think Beyonce would still even be relevant right now? Oh, yeah. You really do? Oh, yeah. I feel like she can't hold a candle to them right now. I feel like because people are not so crazy about just standalone singers anymore. They need a lot. Yeah. Like, you got 40 concerts where people got 
sh- shooting out to the crowd and water it involves like yeah. you got Travis Scott doing like roller coasters they they need some kind of involvement okay. people are just tired of like yebas and adeles and mm. and they're fucking vocalists they can sing the floor they can sing the roof down but people want something to engage them so yeah yeah okay miss queen b was on tour with her hubby <laughs> yeah <laughs> jigga ah uh-huh, uh-huh. they were on the on the run tour part too and see i live in columbia south carolina and i felt like we would never get anybody that big ever to stop through here maybe you know because just look at columbia it's terrible and when the tour was announced the tour was announced my dad joked to me he said hey you better pay attention and make see see if you want to get you a ticket to that and i said they would never stop here like who who would want to stop here unless they stopping for gas and like they would never stop here so the next morning literally as i was walking out to go to school i saw <laughs> the tickets where they had a tour stop here at the colonial no 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 at williams bryce stadium and if you guys don't know williams bryce stadium is the home of the columbia i mean the carolina gamecocks um go cox that's their home. That like that's what they. Said. <laughs> that was that was hard. That was that was. Rough. I mean, it's I the emotion with the hand and everything. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what that was about. <laughs> so, that's that's where they wanted the tour stop because I was like, where could they even fit them? That was an arena, right? That was like a huge arena. So I'm like, where could they even fit them at? So I was like, oh, wow, my dad really had prophesized this. You know, this is like the second time he kind of prophesied a concert because I was like, Kanye wasn't going to stop here either. <laughs> and like, you know, Kanye ended up having a tour stop at the Colonial Life Arena. Even though he canceled, I was scheduled to go. I had a ticket, a, pa- a pass, everything. Wow. A fit. Oh, nasty fit. I had a Polaroid camera. I was so ready to see Kanye West. It took a minute for me to get back right about that shit. But I don't even care. I'll admit it now. I cried. What? When I found out he canceled, I cried in the car. I cried in the car, hitting the car seat, everything. I hope Kanye West hear that. That hurt my heart. And it's not his fault. I mean, his wife was getting robbed. And look at her now. She's getting fucked by Pete Davidson. Okay. All things are fair. <laughs> anyway, back to the story time. Um, So I tell my dad, I really want to go. I really want to go. And I think we should all go. I think we should all go. Like, and my mom, she's not really crazy about, you know, she's not really crazy about concerts and just live stuff. She's just really not into like the big spaces mm-hmm. and everything. So I was trying to convince her to go. And, uh, I love Beyonce and all. I just don't know about all that walking around. She just wouldn't. And my dad was like, oh, I'll catch you next time. I said, there's no be no next time. These motherfuckers will never stop here again. It will ne- you'll never get the chance. Not here. <laughs> So I said, no, it's my business. I got to go. So I I go to school the next day. I'm talking with my teachers about it. And she's like, oh, yeah, I already got my ticket. We're in the box. We're in the Duce section. Wait, so the teachers got a ticket too? Oh, yeah. Like, I saw, like, four or five of my teachers. This is how it gets into story time. It's going to be part of story time. So, like, me and my teacher, we talking about Shout out to Dr. Rodan. You know, you know. She said she had her ticket too. She was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to concert too. So I said, okay, shit. I need to go too. (laughs) So I get, um, I get a ticket. I get like a, a hundred and forty dollar ticket. Mm-hmm. It's not a crappy seat, but it is like from you the side. You can see like the st- like the stage and. Yeah, them. I didn't even go sit in that seat. But listen, the ticket I bought it was just. At the time, I thought I was gonna be stuck with that seat. When it came time for the concert, mm-hmm. um. I all the schools close to the stadium let out of school early because of the heavy amounts of traffic. Like when I tell you, everybody in Columbia is so fucking nosy. They were driving by the stadium to guess they could think they gonna see Beyonce or Jay Z or something. So everybody in Columbia was just driving by the stadium. So the traffic was so bad they let people out of school early. I mean, personally, I left school early myself because I just had to get right. I mean, I'm about to go see J and B. I had to get right. So I leave school. You know, go home, take a shower, get dressed, give me a little snack, something like that, charge my phone, get a portable charger. Oh, I'm, I'm eat me a little edibles. I'm in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm in there. Yeah. So my dad, he drops me off across the street. Tell me, I, I was telling him, you know, I'm going to sit out here and wait. Probably see when my friends walk in. You know, I just wanted to go solo. I just need to see this experience because don't nobody need me in my face while I'm singing. Um, Drunk in love, mind your business because I'm going to sing it. All right. Um, and 
Naughty Girl, like, no one needs to be in my face. So I need to go to that concert solo. Sometimes you got to do some shit like that solo. Mm. So, yeah, I'm going to this concert solo. And it's hot. And across the street from the stadium, the radio station is having, like, a little cookout for every tailgating. For the, the niggas that, who didn't want to go inside, you could tailgate out there. And listen to the concert all night, mm. which is pretty cool. And you listen to sound checks. Um, and on this tour with her was Chloe and Holly, mm, yeah. DJ Cali, mm-hmm. and he brought like people to open up. So there's a lot of people on this tour. So I'm I'm walking up to the thing to do the ticket check in place, and I check in, get my ticket. They tell me where I'm sitting there, and they give me a map, and they tell us like, hey, the gates are gonna open at 6:30, and when they open, y'all will have access to buy merchandise. You know, all the Beyonce shirts. Mm. I, I just the first time I finally seen like. The formation stuff in person, like on the way. That should tell you how small like South Carolina is. Like we don't really get out much. Like I'm finally seeing the shit I see on my timeline on Instagram in person, and it was a shocker for me. So I find a bench to sit down on. Nobody's sitting on it, and then this white lady just walks up to me, an older white lady at that, and she said, "You going to the concert?" And I'm like. I don't just work here. I, I said, yes, ma'am, because she is older than me. I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She said, well, me and my husband, we 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 um we are ticket holders, and we, we get tickets to every event that's here. We are, they, they, they held us a seat. They got the little season tickets or whatever. And she was just like, we're not going to this event. And they were trying to go up there and get a refund, but you can't get a personal refund for every event that you don't go to. Mm-hmm. Then it would be worthless, you know? They just give you money back every time you don't go to something. And they had a wristband. They had two wristbands for the Duce section. Or I guess a Duce section or something like that. Um, hmm. And she offered me one. And she, she asked if I wanted it. And I was like, yes, ma'am. And the ticket was valued at, guess. Like $300. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yes. I'm a good the ticket, the ticket was valued at $340. So... Yeah. yeah, yeah. The ticket was valued at three hundred forty dollars, and they told us the gates open at six, so you can get in early. Oh yeah, and first dibs to discounted merchandise. Yeah. So I got me a shirt, I got me a um, pair of sunglasses, something else. But as I was walking in between like the stadium and the seats, I'm looking around just like everybody else. You know, we just looking around, seeing what's going on. And these people are diehard Beyonce. Let's say, say that first. If you have been to a Beyonce concert, you know it's a lot of diehard oh, stands who yeah. dress just like her. I mean, you see motherfuckers be six five with the inches, the 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 wigs, the uh, heels, the crusty ass toes off the edges, trying to give Beyonce. They be nailing it. But these people, everybody was just dressed up, you know, looking like Beyonce, trying to whatever. And I'm just looking. It's like a real experience. All of a sudden, I hear, move, 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 out the way, move out the way. And I hear like a, it's like we're in a tunnel almost. And I hear, I hear like a little shuttle sounding thing. I think it's mm-hmm. a golf cart. And it's a guy. It's five people running around this golf cart. It's one person running in the front of it, mm-hmm. one person running beside it, um, and a person on the side, a person on both sides. And then there's two people in the front. And then there's a woman laying on the back. So, like, we all move to the side. Like out the way because they were coming through there, and I keep looking closer and closer at the woman on the back, and it was a smaller woman, and she was like leaned over a little bit, and she had sunglasses on. She don't pass up. It was fucking Beyonce. Oh, I thought it was. It was Beyonce. Beyonce was just going somewhere across the little stage. For real? Yes. Damn. And that's how they ran her across because I guess that was a security light. If anybody tried to touch it, they already running around the show, right. running around the golf cart. Yes. Damn. She had a little dog, like a little B. B John Frise looking dog. But yeah, that was you Beyonce. Think she take the family like, with him? Huh? You think she take the family Oh, yeah, yeah, they were. They were there. The children was there. Blue was there. Yeah, all of them was there. Because yeah. those people who got some shit to say about blue ivy hair, y'all really need to find a fucking blue life. Ivy is y'all blue so worried about blue ivy hair and not worry about the right things. Well, like, I don't understand that. The last thing of her concern is. Her quote unquote nappy hair. That girl is a billion dollar baby. Simple as that. So I'm just losing my fucking mind. I'm like, oh my God, that's fucking Beyonce. Like, mm-hmm. that's Beyonce, nigga. Beyonce. Like, she's right there. Like, whoa, that was crazy, right? So I find it's time for me to go to my seat. And guess who's doing the sound check? Beyonce. No, Holly and Chloe. Oh. Not that, nah. <laughs> Holly and Chloe are doing the sound check. I mean, these two bitches sound like little angels. 
they are just amazing. Like they sound great mm-hmm. live. Like they're amazing. Um, and when it came time to you know sit down, since I was only eighteen at the time, I could not sit in that section. Quote unquote. They told me since they are selling alcohol, you had to be twenty one over to sit there. It was the Duce section, right? So he offered me a different seat, but the seat he offered me was a really good seat. I mean, a stellar seat. Like, I was looking over at people. Hide the money, y'all. It's poor people around. With your broke asses. Because look at y'all sitting down there as I sit up here looking at me and be like this. I swear to God, something in my soul, when when Jay-Z was performing um, public service announcement, Mm -hmm. It just, and the fire was shooting, something about that. It just, I don't know, it just really made me like, Beyonce do the next song. That's what it did. Uh, so I was ready to hear Beyonce's next song. Um, sorry, I'm just playing. I, I love Jay-Z. Like, I'm really a big Jay-Z stan. Um, I will argue people down about Jay-Z, crazy enough. The man is really, the proof is in the pudding with his music. Mm-hmm. It just is. And with his businesses and all that shit, so yeah. Jay-Z really hard like that. But I was just hyped. And I noticed that every set that she would do, she would have a different wardrobe. Um, everybody would have a different wardrobe. But the dancers mm. and stuff would go off. When Jay-Z came on to, dan- to rap, they would go off. But mm. here's Beyonce still on the side. Mm. Oh, shit. She was having fun on that tour, man. She was having fun. Like, her energy is, yeah. like, on 10. And, like, she was never, like half doing some of the choreo or like half doing the songs yeah. like she was doing the clips the, i saw yes yeah, she was singing she was doing the full do like yeah yeah like and they did nice and they had the full band come out okay. yeah and they and they weren't like just robots they were talking to the crowd they said what's up columbia all the way from this side two notch road they they took the time into looking in mm-hmm. where they're coming and they had a little slideshow, and he's like, Jay Z's like, it's important that we here in Columbia, South Carolina. It's important that we here in South Carolina in general. You know, he was like a hundred something miles from here. The man shooting at church. I mean, they. It wasn't like uh, just stop, just another stop. You know, they they put something into it. So boom, the opening thing finally start. Ho, uh, Holly and Chloe, they do their little opening thing. They do and. <laughs> <laughs> the misses are gone. DJ Cali brings his brown ass out there. I mean brown, not round. He comes out there and you know, you know, father of a side. He he does it gets the crowd hype. I mean, he does his job. Like DJ Cali could host the coolest pool parties. I feel like he would do an amazing job hosting fo- pool parties. I mean, what is his job? Hype man. We <laughs> nigga! <laughs> He ain't never said it no more after that. You ever heard that song? No, I never heard that We song. So Hood. If you have, you guys have time, go look up I'm So Hood. Not We So Hood. I'm So Hood. And look at the, the original version with DJ Khaled. He'd be like, we nigga. He never said nigga again. <laughs> mm. I don't know what DJ Khaled's actual job is, but I'm not mad at whatever he does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not mad. But he does his set, and then the screen goes black. I mean, boom. Light come back, boom. Light on, boom. And I had to charge my phone and everything with a portable charger. You know, I'm up to 98%. I have a thing. I don't leave home without my phone over 80%. I have, a, like, I really don't like leaving my house. I like I don't like to leave nowhere. I have been late to things because mm-hmm. I needed my phone to charge yeah. more than 80%. I have been paranoid. My phone shutting down on me somewhere, and I don't have nowhere else my phone. Just bring the charger, though. The car charges don't be charging them. They just keep your phone stable. That'll hold your ass. Um, yeah, check that out. Check that shit out. So I just, you know, I don't ever do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have my phone ready. I'm, I'm in my bag, right? I, I'm really, like, this. everything is going right. You know, sometimes you'll be at a good shit and, like, one or two things go wrong. Like, oh, I'm at a lit-ass party. Shit, my fucking stomach hurt. Oh, yeah. Or, ooh, I'm at a nice-ass wedding. Oh, my fucking fit is ugly. You know, but every scene, everything seemed to line up. Yeah. The, the stars were aligning in my way. My phone was charged. I looked good. It felt good outside. I had a nice thing to drink. The edibles was kicking in more and more. I, it was just a moment. So Beyonce comes out there and she does feeling myself. 
and then she turns into um it like it it meshes into um flawless no flawless meshes to feeling myself in the chore the choreography ooh let's chew the fuck out that word the choreography was just impeccable like that concert was amazing and like her breath control her like voice her everything about it it just made it just solidified to me why i feel like she's the best live performer and when the concert was over they didn't like walk off the stage and just disappear they didn't say nothing they said we've had a wonderful night with y'all and they waved to everybody off the stage as the people's exited they didn't leave the stage until all the people exited that's different i've been to a concert where lesser people they will leave mid song mm -hmm. and let the song play out i won't name names Name the song. Jayla, shall I name the names? Cardi B. Kevin Gates. I have both seen I've seen both of them leave a song playing and walk off. In this song? Like in the performance or as they end in their set for the next person. I think that's very tremendously sad. Especially if you're closing out the show. Um that's unfortunate. Um, but that shows like they're showmen, they're true showmen, and that's why they are in the position that they are when it comes to discussions about music. Because they do the extra niche, they do the extra extra yeah. niche. She doesn't have to come back and sit on the stage. She don't have to uh, like acknowledge yeah, people in the crowd. You know, they had a little moment where like Mayor Benjamin gave them the key to the city. I mean like simple stuff like that. They 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 do the extra things. Um and that was the first time I ever seen Beyonce live. Like and I it will not be the last. But God, like, jeez, the performance. And, like, it was a long set, and I did not get tired. I mean, people was behind me, like, can you sit down? And I'm like, can you shut the fuck up? <laughs> How about that? You know? Like, can you, excuse me, sir. My mother cannot see. She is elderly. I said. All them signs they had. Well, sit her ass on the ground. The hell? Sit this bitch on the ground. Like, what the fuck you mean she can't see? <laughs> if, if you can't see, and I can't see, all that fucking matters. Can the horse see, right? No, mm -hmm. bitch. If you can't see, you mind you move your ass somewhere until you fucking can see. The hell, I'm gonna stand up at a concert, bitch. It's called a standing ovation, and I gave Beyonce that. But yes, that was the first time I ever seen Beyonce live. Now, does that change your mind about who's a better performer? Mm, I mean, she's a good performer. Yeah, I give her that. But I mean. <laughs> Father, help Marcus see the light. I see the light. He sees the light. Okay, maybe Marcus will see the light next time. 